Hi, my name is Haley Rando, and I'm happy to be presenting Adapting Manubot for Open Publishing in the COVID-19 infodemic. So to kind of set the stage, obviously a lot of things were changing back in March of 2020, but there were a few specific things that impacted the field of biology. So with universities shutting down, many researchers were unable to access the labs that they depended on to conduct research. And this is particularly detrimental for early career, career wet lab researchers. Um, additionally, many of us were reading the COVID-19 literature independently, but there was a huge amount of information to get through. So in early March, there was a data set released that documented 28,000 papers that were re relevant to understanding COVID-19. Obviously, it spans many fields and it would be impossible for a single person to have expertise in all of the areas relevant to COVID-19. So as a result, we identified that Manubot might be a helpful resource. So Manubot is a collaborative framework that adapts open source software development techniques and version control for manuscript writing. So you're able to write a paper in Markdown and then export it to PDF, HTML, and Docx. Additionally, Manubot integrates with GitHub, which allows us to um, make, a very, make a project very scalable, um, accommodating many collaborators and tracking individual contributions. And it also allows us to <coughs> work with continuous integration to actually generate figures from code so that they're very reproducible. We thought that there would be several applications to COVID-19, so we could centralize the reading and reviewing process across a number of scientists and allow us to synthesize information across disciplines. Additionally, um, given the lack of access to labs, it was an opportunity to provide space for people to learn a new skill. And it would also allow us to keep track of how scientific opinion changed over time. And then this ended up being more important than we initially anticipated, but obviously um, uh, it allowed us to create a document that evolved in response to information changing over time. So I'm gonna start off going through our project workflow by focusing on some of the standard elements of Manubot that we employed. So contributions were made via pull request and edits, um, at least two reviewers looked at each pull request and then um, provided feedback. So here you can see text written by Dimitri Perrin that's then edited by Niels Wilhelmsen and GitHub and Git will allow us to track who made what contributions. Additionally, we used issues in a somewhat unusual way. So we set up these templates that allowed a contributor to check the appropriate boxes, which would allow the tags to be applied to the issue. Um, and then we had a standardized template for them to kind of summarize the research done in the paper. And then these could be used when um, writing a section, um, our contributor could pull up relevant issues. Additionally, um, a really important element of Manubot for this project was the reference management. So in Manubot, instead of trying to integrate reference lists across a large number of contributors, you can just reference a paper by some sort of standard identifier, such as a DOI. And in our case, that ended up being super important because we're up to over 2,000 references at this point. Um, and as we, this project went on, we kind of identified several minor needs, such as additional training materials and additional flexibility in, in document outputs. But um, there are several things that just build on um, existing features in Manubot that we were able to expand. So for one, we found that users really missed some of the features of what you see is what you get platforms like Google Docs and specifically spell checking. So we developed an approach that allows um, on GitHub when a user opens a PR, the bot will comment with the spelling errors that it identifies and where they're located in the text. And it also allows us to compare these spelling errors against a manually maintained list of field specific words. Um, so this is really advantageous for cleaning up the text. Additionally, as I mentioned, Manubot has this nice way of setting um, identifiers, but for this project, because it was so focused on biology, we actually had other identifiers that we really kind of needed to cite, such as clinical trials. Um, and one of our contributors was able to develop an extension for Zotero that would retrieve the citation metadata from clinicaltrials.gov. And in doing this, he actually made it possible to cite any compact uniform resource identifier directly. So this will allow for the citation of stuff like clinical trials or NCBI genes. As you are probably all aware, the literature has been changing extremely quickly. So there are now over a million papers in the COVID-19 data set that came out in March of 2020. 
with 28,000 papers, and a very large fraction of these are preprints. Um, so preprints don't undergo the standard review process, um, but even in the case of papers that do undergo the standard review process, there have been quite a large number of retractions, expressions of concern, and other editorial notices. So at present, there are about 258 editorial notices. Um, and to address this, we ended up integrating our project with a tool called Cite. Um, and Cite is a tool for smart citations that tracks withdrawals, retractions, and other expressions of concern. It also evaluates the number and tone of citations. So you can see this paper has um, 5,000 neutral supporting statements, 129 positive ones, and 14 that seem like they may disagree. Um, moving on, we, in addition to the static figures generated at build, we came up with an approach to allow for more dynamic integration of figures. So for example, as we started writing this paper, we would try to re report the cases and deaths, but it became increasingly difficult to do this as the information changed so quickly. But it turned out that there was an external resource that was tracking this information. So now it's possible to pull this data from, um, from the external data source, analyze it in Python through continuous integration, and then generate these figures at build. So you can see over time, um, they're with you know, some stylistic changes, but they're adapting um, to, the, to the data as it comes out. Additionally, this allows us to insert text in line that can change in response to external data. So <coughs> as you can see, the cases and deaths are reported here as variables, um, but the variables are generated through that external data analysis and then stored in a JSON file, and then at build, they are rendered in line. So the ultimate goal of this project from the standpoint of most of the users was to actually write some manuscripts, and we've been fairly successful at doing that. We have published three papers so far, and we have a fourth reprint out with two coming soon. Um, and we do have the option to potentially update these. This is an evolving review. Um, which some people are in the progress of doing. And overall, Manibot has been extremely useful for this project, even though typically Manibot has been used more for computational fields. So it offered us a way to organize a cross-disciplinary analysis of the literature. It also did manage the scaling problem that we didn't anticipate um, much better than, <laughs> than you would have thought, given how much we didn't understand this would grow. Additionally, with open publishing, the provenance of ideas remains intact and publicly available. And we have demonstrated that with support, non-computational non researchers can use Manubot. There are a few additional challenges that we're working on. So DocX is extremely popular and there's a real need to figure out a way to integrate track changes into the Manubot workflow. So I'm working on an approach to apply changes to a markdown file. Additionally, it is impossible to keep all sections of such a large manuscript equally up to date for such a large project. So um, I'm interested in whether there are ways to flag sections or specific statements based on external data by opening issues or, or adding in text boxes. And finally, ultimately, we really didn't manage to keep a stride of the infodemic. It's, I don't know if it's possible, um, but this is definitely a step in the right direction towards ma machine curation of information. And, um, the curie uh, tracking will really allow to see connections across manuscripts. Uh, so in closing, I'm very, very grateful to all of the contributors who worked on this project, and I'm happy to take um, questions via email or Twitter, or um, please just hop on and join us if you're interested. Thank you very much.